trampling out the village where the plates of lead were stored. Yes, He's loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. Yes, his truth is marching on. Yes, sir. He has sounded forth a trumpet that shall never call retreat. Yes, he is lifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Yes, oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Phenomenal. It's because he went back to the root, to the source of wisdom. The source of wisdom is the word of God. There were four pericopes, four elements of uh, speech, the Martin Luther King speech, which was which were based on biblical inferences. And we could see the verse from Amos chapter five, verse twenty-four. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never fallen stream, justice. We know that some people have said, oh, we should define justice as giving people their rights. <laughs> but on the deeper thought, we say, it's not about rights. It's about the right that is due. Because you, would, you might give somebody a cup of coffee and say, that's your right. That's your due. So, But this is not your due. People define justice in different ways in order to distort equality in justice. It's an inalienable right that has been given to us by God. Just like air, which is given for free and um, we cannot afford to buy them. So this is what justice means. When, when he uses this poetic expression of justice and righteousness meeting, you could absolutely understand the meaning of equality and unity embedded in the gift of justice. Righteousness is the act of being able to let go and to give. This is the act of God. Righteousness is the act of God. Righteousness is not our act. It's, not a, hum it's a divine quality, which we try to participate in when we do good. Doing good with righteousness is actually a virtue and is not a social assistance. Doing good with righteousness, it means it becomes a divine action. So Martin Luther King calls for a divine action in order to uh, translate an action in the society when it becomes divine. So he, he, in this in this part, uh, passage, he, he he calls leaders to open their eyes, especially those who disseminate. Uh, uh, the gift of uh, policies and um, equality, it invites them to, to act righteously. So justice can only become a gift of, a, a free gift when it becomes a gift, an act of God. And the second pericope was uh, Isaiah 40, 45, where it says, every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough plains plain. In the, this, is a, this is the central theme of the Old Testament that affects me most, because it doesn't tell the story of the Israelites or the story of uh, kings and prophets of, uh, of, of the old, but it tells us the theme of Christianity. And this is a very central theme too in the, in the readings of Advent and Christmas. Where, where this readings uh, introduces and brings in Jesus Christ and the role of Jesus Christ. Yeah, for me, the answer to that challenge is, uh, is found in Isaiah chapter 61, verse one. It says, the spirit of, Lord, of the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. So it is a challenge and there is an answer. From chapter one of, to chapter 39 of of Isaiah, he talks about prophecies that connected and concerns the Israelite alone. But in this particular pericope, in this particular verse or two verses, 
he tells us how it becomes an inclusive venture. It is no more a thing about the Israelites alone, but it's about every valley. Of course, it's direct to Israelites, but when we look at it deeply, we see the, the challenge of the word of God to all nations. And Jesus answered it. And they came in and said in the book of, in the gospel of Luke, he says, the spirit of the Lord has anointed me, almost saying word to word, what has been said in Isaiah 61, verse one. At the end of the day, it becomes a Christian challenge. No matter what we do, it becomes the challenge of all Christians. Cut down all mountains. These are very symbolic expressions, but when we look at them, we understand um, exactly how it challenges us. All indifferences, all segregation, all disunity, all um, non tolerance, cut them low. Come back to the smooth, plain understanding of God's presence with God's children among God's people. God claims the world again with this challenge. The third reference is made to Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. It says, this is, a, this is where the core of this speech is. There is neither Jews nor Gentiles, neither slaves nor free, nor their male and female, for you are all one in Christ. This is the central theme of Christianity, where Christ dominates. The domination of Christ comes. I, I, I don't like to use the word dominate because it sounds so forceful and um, political and uh, dictatorial. But um, pardon me when we use such words because it brings in the power of Christ, the reign of Christ is a human form of um, expressing the presence of God over every other dominions, powers, and nations. But, um, in this uh, passage, <clears throat> uh, this uh, gospel verse, we find out that Martin Luther King tells us that we are all created by one God, all in the image of God. So justice is not found from how people look, but because we are all made in the image of God and have this right, like we say in the, in the constitution, inalienable right, inalienable right, a right that is not given to us because of anything. So he says, he goes back again to say, because we are created in the image of God and we are all forgiven, we are all equally, sometimes we are weak, and equally, we are all weak, but this is looking at the graciousness of God in order to seek the essence of um, his request. He calls for unity, he calls for dignity of all human people. It is from this dignity that the Catholics, like you and I, we continue to fight for both born and unborn children. But this is an area we really need to work hard on in this country and in the nations of the world. Because this speech does not only imply or apply to people who are alive or who we can see, the rights of the unborn. We become their voices, we become their, 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 their thinking uh, apparatus because they have a right to live too. Thanks to Martin Luther King Jr. Today, there are people fighting for rights and equality, even for unborn children. Because the unborn child is made in the image of God too. And a lot of people have given us views and arguments to say, but they are still fetus, but they are unborn. And if they're unborn, I have rights. What about those who are born, who have been given the, the, the right to come out into the world? And this is where my, I channel my argument to say, we have to go for all lives. You know, recently with the recent uh, Black Lives Matters, I keep saying, we, it's all life. But I know the story has made it more pertinent for us to understand what uh, Black Lives Matters mean. It is not exclusion, it's an inclusion of all lives. So I want to tell my friends, 
who argue with me. Oh, but why do you say black? Why don't you say all life? Historically, we have been moved to come to this um, intent and to this view of saying, we need to include this too. It is embedded in this talk. All life matters, black lives matter. The third reference is made on from Psalm 30 verse five. Weeping may stay for the night, but, re, but rejoicing comes in the morning. It's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy. There must be weeping in order to get what we are looking for. It's not going to be uh, simple to say, we have given everybody equality and rights and everybody is equal. It's gonna take a long time. It's gonna take a fight. Of course, it's taking a fight. Equality. No individual is to be subjected both ways. There will be struggle. Let me ask you this question. How do you feel when your privileges are removed? When, how do you feel when your privileges are shared and maybe your own is now a quarter instead of a full? That's the problem. We do not want to understand the whipping aspect of it. The whipping aspect of it is the fact that we may have to give up some few things. For instance, poorer people will begin to enjoy what the richer people are enjoying. Inclusion will, will mean sharing amenities, sharing the gifts of God. And But we are ready to share the gift of God. That is the weeping in it. You will need to give up. The fighting is to come up. It takes also a struggle. Come on, give us what belongs to everybody. Give us what belongs to us. So on that aspect of our talk, we begin to see why we are still struggling, but we will overcome. Faith comes handy here. It is our tool. Faith is our weapon. Love, forgiveness, kindness, uh, 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 tolerance, those are the elements and, and, and tools of this weapon. But freedom will come and we will all embrace it and grow in liberty. We grow in welcome, we grow in tolerance of one another. We become therefore the response of Isaiah 61 verse one. We become the agents of justice. We become the agents of righteousness. We become the agents of unity. We become the agents of tolerance. It is not one-sided. It's a challenge to Africans, African-Americans, challenge to white, challenge to all nations of the world where we become part of what we want. Today, the implication of this I have a dream talk is there, is, is locking on in the faces of our, of our people. It has great implication to the world. It has imp great implication to the United States. Today in our country, we have a, the call for unity more than any other time in our lives. In a few days, we are going to hand over uh, into a new government. We want peace. We want this to go smoothly. This, the issue of unity is still there. We are still in this struggle. We are still weeping, but God will see us through. In the whole world today, bigger nations are suppressing the, bigger, the smaller nations. Uh, and um, the leaders of the world, uh, they are amassing the world wealth and keeping it to themselves. People in the little, in the, in the other countries of the developing nations, their leaders take all their monies come back to the developed nations and the developed nations are going back to help. And sometimes you start looking at the whole scenario of um, injustice and uh, indifference. But that is a talk for another day. Today, how do you participate in this vision that has been set aside like other prophecies, like the challenges of Christ? How do I participate in the vision of Martin Luther King Jr.? I thank you all for being here today. And I ask you and urge you to rejoice for where we have come so far. We have done a wonderful job, but we have more and still more waiting to be done. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Yes, we have come a mighty long way. And, um, Long, not long. Step by 
Sister Roberta? You can go ahead and unmute. Unmute, Sister. Unmute, Sister. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. All right. Today is God's Day. Uh, greetings to all of you and especially to um, Kathleen and Father Michael, who graciously invited me to share with you this morning. Father Michael's talk set the tone of today. Today is a day of asking, in the words of Martin Luther King, how long, not long. In the midst of COVID-19, the unrest throughout the country and the communities and cities, as well as the worldwide, I come before you hopeful. In spite of it all, we've come a long way since the Voting Rights Act. How long? Not long. James Weldon Johnson's words from Lift Every Voice and Sing speaks to this. We've come over a way that with tears have been watered. We have come treading our paths through the blood of the slaughtered. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a fearless and courageous leader. Listening to his words four score years ago from his I Have a Dream speech reminds me that we stand today because our ancestors marched. They walked, they cried, and they died for freedom and justice. How long? Not long. Barbara Holmes in her book, Joy Unspeakable, uses this phrase from Lemmy Kibi, bitter waters, to describe not just the trauma of the transatlantic passage of Africans into the Americas. This speaks clearly about the stark realities of the slave ship. Captured Africans were lying on their sides on the ships that pitched with every wave. Together they wept, they moaned in a forest community that cut across tribal and cultural lines. This passage was horrific. And in it, the slaves moved from personhood to property to non-identity. The Africans, our ancestors died to what was and could have been. They left their homeland as Africans connected and were reborn as property. They were stripped of everything, status, identity, removed from a social structure. Yet through it all, we see wondrous examples of valiant heroes and sheroes, too many for me to begin to list. As we remember Dr. Martin Luther King today, we are still asking, how long, not long? Over the past 400 plus years, we have had numerous incidents like George Floyd, yet we forget the problem until there's another Breonna Taylor and on and on. We can't sweep the past under the back porch the way was hard, yet our ancestors kept lifting up their voices despite the grief, fear, anger, frustration, humiliation. They were anchored in the Lord. That's why they could sing, I feel no ways tired. Can you get an amen from this? Can I hear you say an amen? They were anchored in the Lord. We have joined in the march. We stand up for justice and peace. We walk with the poor. We speak up against human trafficking, racism, economic injustice. We march for environmental justice, prison reform, 
health justice. Public hangings have ended and the murders of unarmed black people rise. Slavery has ended, but mass incarceration of minority people increases. Jim Crow practices are no longer openly discriminatory. However, they reappear as educational and economic disparities, voter suppression and aggressive police actions against people of color. Historically, the black church served as a safe space for spiritual and civil rights activism. However, as the civil rights generation ended, the church became less relevant to a generation raised on technology and increased global connections. It seems as only the churches rooted in the community of service to the poor remained relevant. We must continue to speak to our millennials, the young people. We must tell them that this civil rights movement is not for your grandmothers and your grandfathers. It's not a movement just for them. You young people, you must be part of the march. Yes, using different strategies and leaders to seek justice. We are not leaderless. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his life for others to step up. We must step up. We must take that torch and pass it forward. Be the drummer. We must breathe together to call forth the spiritual strength to end racism. We must continue to sing, we shall overcome like the church mothers and the church fathers of old. The question before us today is, are we complicit in keeping things the way they are? When the chaos comes, the protesting subsides, the work for justice must continue. Even though, as Father mentioned, we will continue to face the difficulties of racism, disunity, our urgent call is to believe there is one thing I can do now. Every time we try to sit down, call to our memory, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Booger T. Washington, John Lewis, and we jump right back up and we continue the hard work of justice. The challenge will continue to happen. The change will continue to happen, but it will happen from the edge of the inside. Continue to do something that will make a difference in your life and the life of others. Can I have an amen for that? Continue. Amen. Amen, thank you. The social justice issues must remain at the forefront of our agendas. Yeah, we recognize that there are different approaches to these challenges. We will not be discouraged by the journey. Finally, to that end, we must come and we must stand up. We must continue to walk the walk, talk the talk, navigate the difficulties, those difficult conversations about racism. Let us keep pushing against the edge. Remember, it starts with you, with me, with each one of us. How long? Not long. Take to heart again the words from Dr. Martin Luther King from a speech he gave in Philadelphia back in 1967. And I quote, go back to your communities, be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be a sun, be a star. Amen to this again. Let's leave here today more committed to the struggle for justice and peace. For it isn't by the size that you win or fail. I tell you today, in the words of Martin Luther King, be the best of whatever you can be. Our hope is that the arc of the moral universal is long, but it bends towards justice. It might not be tomorrow. However, as we keep our gaze looking backward and forward, someday 
justice will be achieved. Walk together, children, and don't you get weary. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. Inside, we have that unspeakable joy and we can shout, I feel no ways tired. We've come too far. No turning back. No turning back. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sister. Not so. Yeah, you said, um, I've come too far to turn them back now. How about that, Charlton? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, that's very inspirational. Thank you, uh, sister. Thank you, uh, father, for uh, your words as well. Thank you, Kathleen, for inviting me to uh, be a part of this. Um, one of the things that, um, that I actually struggle with, believe it or not, um, as long as I have been playing um, music and I started at an early age, my, my first performance was actually when I was three years old and in my father's church. Um, but uh, usually when folks ask me to participate on a program, uh, sometimes I still struggle with finding um, the right song. I always try to find the right song and um, that can be almost impossible. Um, but sister, wow, you, you, you gave me quite a few um, choices in there. Um, one of which is something that um, my grandmother sang quite a bit. Uh, so um, I'm gonna throw that in there and, and maybe a few other things in, uh, from, uh, from Sister's words that I hope everybody will enjoy. Just a quick little medley of some tunes. First of all, can you all hear this all right? Star 
is kept. And it all goes back to the Lord. God of our weary years. God of our silence. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Alton. You know, um, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. And he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his dynamic leadership of the civil rights movement and the steadfast commitment to achieving racial justice through nonviolent action. I want to say that our very own Shelton Singleton won the Grammy. Uh -huh. 2020. And um, 
we asked him to show it to us because I've never really seen one up close. Oh. Uh, yes. So that's a little special treat. Isn't that nice, y'all? Beautiful. Congratulations again. Ranky Tanky. Google it, look it up. You can get the music, whatever. Um, we are blessed to have Sister Roberta Fulton, Father Michael O'Carey, and all of you and everyone else in the Catholic Church and those that just follow the Catholic Church and what we do here today. And just to have you in our diocese, these are the gifts that we bring. And we have to celebrate those gifts. <clears throat> so we're going to now engage you all and see what you know about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And um, so get out your uh, little fingers and I want you to answer this question. Um, can everybody see it? Here's a little mini quiz. I'm gonna start answering it. The question is what college did Dr. King earn his PhD? <laughs> Panelists cannot join, I hope. Um, no, and you know, we we have come up with those questions, Father. Remember that little working? <laughs> yeah. That's I know, I that know. That's why we can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got 44%. Quickly, y'all. Oh. Okay, welcome, Michelle Myers. We're glad that you can join us. Yeah. Is it my own Michelle Myers? Okay. You have a winner? No, um, we're at sixty-two percent. They're really thinking out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they do still hard one. On that. This is a really, yeah. really hard one. That that one, yeah. Actually, okay, we're at sixty-five percent. Any more? I'm getting ready to cut it off. Go ahead and just take your lucky guess. It's going up. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to get seventy percent at least. Come on, folks. You all are just still thinking about that music. You just can't <laughs> that music can get over all those speeches and deliverance. We're at 70, 70 out of 94 people, 75%. 70. Okay. We're gonna start right there. We'll end the poll and um, share the results. The correct answer is, what is it, Sister Roberta? Boston University. All right, Boston University. <laughs> Now, the, the trick here was PhD. He did attend Morehouse. Yeah. Grad. That was undergrad. <laughs> but he got his PhD from a Boston University. I am so glad no one picked the Wilson Pickett School of Graduate Studies. <laughs> 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 Although we won't tell you, but one of the panelists did. Y'all, we're not going to tell you. <laughs> I was wondering why, Catherine. <laughs> Why did they pick, and no one picked that, right? What, what no, one? they did not. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, here we go. Where did Martin Luther King deliver his famous I have a dream speech? Wow, go ahead. That one, you all are going faster this time. Yeah. Yes. Here, percent let's keep going. Uh, Father Michael referred to it in his talk. <laughs> <laughs> cheat, cheat, cheat. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Charles. Go ahead. Do, 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 do. I love that. What percent you have? You must be up there with that one. Yeah. He's at, yeah, a little quicker this time. We're at 70%, 71. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll go ahead and cut it off. Okay. We got 75%. Mm. Yay. Yay. Yeah, 70% of those that voted um, got it right. It is the Lincoln Memorial National Mall. It's kind of a trick question, yeah. So we'll stop sharing that and we'll go to the next one.
Here we go. What boycott outlaws segregation on public transportation? What boycott was that? <laughs> Went fast here. How about Charlton? <laughs> <laughs> This is all so tied into what today is about, you know, um, mm -hmm. remembering um, a, a people like Rosa Parks and all of those people who stood up and said, I feel no ways tired and they kept going on. I feel like going on. Today, when we think about Dr. Martin Luther King on his, I think this would have been his 92nd birthday, he felt like going on through it all gave his life. Okay, Rick Harrison answered one question and he got it right. That was right, Rick, I see that. Okay, here we go, we're in this poll. Let's see how you all did. 100%. Wow, that's wonderful. Wow. We know that, that was, that was something. How can you forget that? Yes. How can you forget that? And there's so many pictures of that out there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Here we go. In what year was Martin Luther King Day adopted as a holiday? Think about where you were, what song was on the radio when they proved that holiday. Wow, going fast here. Mm. <laughs> Thirty-eight years later, we are still celebrating this wonderful day. Mm -hmm. And then I remember when we had to still fight for it to become a holiday in certain states, yes. in certain schools. Yes. And you know, even though it was passed as a federal holiday, we still had to fight for it to really be recognized. Right. And Stevie and we Wonder, wanted. Stevie Wonder brought it home when he develop happy birthday to ya. Oh yeah. yeah. Mr. Romero, you're cheating, you're giving them cheat answers. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Romero, you're giving them cheat answers, man. Cheat, cheat answers. Okay, we're gonna close it off. Let's see how you all did. Yep. 1983 is correct. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Um that was it, 1983. That was what, a long time ago, actually. And, and I'm just so happy that we have this opportunity to come today just to slow down and think and to give God his glory and to pray for peace because this unprecedented 2020 and then jump off into 2021 has definitely been unprecedented. I didn't expect that. So how long? Not long. Mm -hmm. Let's keep the faith. Let's keep the faith. And as Johnny Dorsey just posted that some folks don't celebrate it today, but we have to keep as we're doing today, take time oh, out and make it that it is, it is a holiday. Okay, we have one more. This is the last one. And hey, Johnny Dorsey, I haven't seen you in a while. I'm so glad you're here with us. Johnny is uh, one of my colleagues um, with the Catholic offices of ministry with the diocese and um, he was from Texas. Yes, great to see him. He retired. Yes. <laughs> and enjoying life. Okay, here we go. How does Martin Luther King's I have a dream speech begin? <laughs> Mr. Rivera. <laughs> we are waiting. We are waiting. We are I, waiting, know, I know, I know, I know. We're waiting for you. We're waiting for Sister Romero. I know. Yeah. <laughs> we. I was hoping Senorita Sullivan would have joined us from Saudi. She was oh, planning. That would have been wonderful. I think she was trying to get on. I don't. I'm not sure she got on, but she was excited about trying to be on. I'm looking. I don't see her name here. No. No. Okay. She's yeah. So we we uh we passed the um, the maximum participation so that's why uh, oh yeah yeah okay. we're at 100 nobody else can get on this is wonderful this is so yeah. cool. maybe next year we'll have to go up to 500 yeah it would be great good that would be great 
Okay, we're going to end this at 61%. Here we go. Oh, I oh. have a dream. Hmm. No. No. I gave it away in my speech. <laughs> five score. Yes. That's right. And uh, what does five score mean? Score is an increment of 20. That means 20. And so he's saying really 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hundred years ago, when he gave that speech. Now, right, right. Have to add another score or two or three. I don't know. Yes. To right. make it accurate, four score and seven years ago was the uh, Declaration of Independence. It didn't begin, but it's in there. And again, that was four score, which would be eighty-seven years. Right. A use in that particular document. Mm -hmm. so, now you that. Five score years ago. That's correct. Thank you all. You all did really, really well. I'm, I'm very proud that you all know your Black history, especially when it comes to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. So that is our program that we had in celebration. We're going to say thank you to, I see Ann Nurbin posted in, the Nurbins from um, Columbia, and you used to be in Sumter. So shout out to the Nurbins, Ann and her family. Yeah. Tommy Blake from up in Rock Hill, St. Mary's. I see Veronica. A um, lot of people. A lot oh, of people. God. We could go on. Sister Coley Stoltz, Sister Calissa Robinson. Oh, from back He's, in the National Black Catholic Congress. Got, got, this, got so the smudges here, too. Got the smudges. Yes, it's all yes, Kathy. Oh, the pro, uh, pro life office. Um, Kathy's here, and um, I know she's very pleased that um, Father Michael covered all grounds in this. Lauren story. Brown, who is a, a junior a lady of Peter Claver all the way from, uh, where's Lauren? She's studying up in, um, oh gosh, it's uh, way out west there. Somewhere. Iowa, Iowa. Iowa. Hey, Lauren, Lauren, yeah. we miss you. And Be I safe. Don't... Yeah. Yeah, and then Father Henry Kula is out there from St. Patrick's. Yeah, and Sister Beulah. All Audrey from there. Audrey, Audrey oh. from, from, from Orangeburg. Vern so Garcia. People. Oh, good. Um, Eleanor you. Nelson from Dr. Harrison. Flavor Ladies Auxiliary. She, yes. She's not from South Carolina. Thank you so much, Eleanor. Yes. Vern Garcia. I see she's you. from Chal Charleston. Thank you. And we hope you take this great message of today and keep it there. How long? Not long. And it's all rooted in those scripture reflections that Father Michael shared with us. You know that um, the, the black church used to be the, the place where we have to, when you get ready to sit down, you jump right back up and we keep going. Amen. Okay, Father Michael, why don't you just do a closing prayer for us and send us forth. We've come these far, far by faith. faith. Leaning on the Lord. Oh, carry on, sister. <laughs> Justine oh, in his holy word. Charlton. Charlton, that's on mute. We need Charlton. Oh, I'm mute, Charlton. Can't turn around. We've come this far. I'm sorry, I was muted. <laughs> so. Okay, we can do it again. Thank you for giving us this wonderful opportunity to worship, to rejoice, to celebrate. Thank you for giving us this day, keeping us safe in the midst of one of the great, one of the worst pandemics of our life. Lord, we thank you. It is not because we are better than others. 
It is not because we are richer than others. It is not because we are wiser than others. But it is your it is for your for your gift and for your kindness to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We want you to be in our journey so that we will not despair. We want you to be in our journey so that we will be we will do it in peace. We want you to be in our journey so that it will be successful and prosperous. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the dice of Charleston that has given us the opportunity to call your name at such a time and guide us and lead us. May our faith continue to grow and never wane because of the difficulties that we experience in our lives. Guide us, Lord, for in you we have trust, in you we have hope. May the church say amen. 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 amen, Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.